Have you ever seen a marketing message that says something like, there are only two spots left to this program? I have seen that so many times uh, in the past 13 years that I've been in this industry full time. And the sad part is most of the time when there's that kind of message, two spots left to a program, that, that message is being sent to thousands of people. So let's think about this. If there are two spots left and there are thousands of people getting the invitation, how is everyone supposed to feel who cannot get one of those two spots? So one of two things is happening. Okay. Either the marketer is lying and there aren't, aren't actually only two spots left. There are plenty of spots left, but they're just using a trick to get you to buy. Okay, that's one possibility, which is already it's not, it's not ethical. And the, number two is that there really are only two spots left, but they don't care how everyone else feels who can't get those two spots because they want the audience to feel the fear of missing out, FOMO. And why would the audience, why would they want the audience feeling that? Well, I think knowingly or unknowingly, they want to control the audience. Okay, let me explain. When, when they do something where it's like, oh, I, I have to take action on this um, because it's this product it sounds so amazing, this service, this program, it's going to change my life, save my life, whatever it is. And there's only two spots left. I have to act on this. Otherwise, I'll feel badly. And when the marketing has the, has the a dynamic of you buy this or otherwise you feel badly, that is a mechanism of control. It is basically eroding the audience member's sovereignty or free will because the result of not doing what the marketing campaign is asking them to do is to feel badly, to feel left out, to feel like that was the only chance left, etc. And what's, what's sad to me particularly is that a lot of heart-based people fall into, well, two things, they fall into being controlled in this kind of way. But secondly, they fall into using these tactics in their own marketing because they don't know any better. And maybe you have done this yourself. I certainly have in the past. Because we think that that's how, that's how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to use persuasive and, well, FOMO, I'll just say it, fear, fear of missing out type of marketing so that once people start working with you, then you can be an ethical and heart-based person. But the marketing is just supposed to be dirty and kind of evil and, right? Is marketing supposed to be that way? Just kind of like have to do what you have to do. It's kind of, it's, it's a means to an end. It's not what, none of us want to do marketing, but we have to do it. So we just have to do it in a dirty and slightly evil kind of way. But then really, we are good people. We just have to do the uh, unpalatable actions to get people to work with us. And then we'll be ethical and abundant and, and compassionate and sensitive, et cetera, when, when we actually do the work with them. And I, it's not necessary. And it's bad for the world. Because the reality, I, I, I always have to remind you this, most of the people who are touched by your marketing will probably never work with you. Yeah. And in fact, the more successful your marketing is, the larger percentage of people will never work with you. Why? Because the more successful your marketing is, the more people it reaches. And the more people it reaches, just the greater percentage of people who, for whatever reason, are not the right fit for you, timing, um, they move on later, whatever. They just don't, don't work with you. 
only if your marketing is not successful is it only seen by a few people. And if you're lucky, a few of those few people will work with you. But the more your marketing, the more you do your marketing, the more you're changing the world, while only a small percentage of those naturally, this is just statistics, will end up working with you. So what I'm always trying to do to remind you about authentic marketing is that you're creating karma, okay? With every marketing action you're taking, you're creating karma and you're also improving or degrading your reputation. So when you do things like two spots left and it's being sent to thousands of people or, or whatever, a lot of people, you just have to realize that people are starting to uh, either lose their trust in you uh, because it's, it doesn't make sense when you send out that kind of message to thousands of people or even sometimes hundreds of people. So you might say, well, George, how should you fill two spots left when there's real scarcity? How do we market that? So if there are two spots left, what I don't, I don't email to my list. I don't post it on social media. I individually email a couple of the people that have maybe they have uh, replied to my email newsletter or they're, they've commented on my social media or maybe they've inquired in the past. I, I specifically email a few people saying, hey, there are only two spots left and you are one of the only people that I'm inviting to this. Please let me know in the next two days if possible so I can know whether to invite others. I give the opportunity to others, you see. So it's a much, uh, it's, it's, therefore I'm not, bothering or annoying the rest of my audience. And this reminds me of um, if you've ever made popcorn, most of us have, whether it's on the stove or in the microwave, this is what happens, right? You turn on the fire, you turn on the microwave, and then it starts to heat up the bag or to heat up the, 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 the raw kernels. And then after a little while, you start getting popping, 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 and the popping gets faster. This is when the marketing is starting to work. Okay, the popping, you know, the, the, the kernels become the popcorn. And then you'll notice that the right? it, it kind of slows down to just like a pop every second or two. And then if you keep the fire going, sure, you will pop a few more. You'll get a few more sales, but then you're going to burn a lot of the other kernels. A lot of the ones that were already popped may be, become burned, annoyed, but the ones that are not popped will become burned as well. You risk burning a lot more of the kernels than you pop at the very end. But this is what most marketing is going to teach you. Just keep on marketing, marketing, promoting, promoting, promoting. Even if you just get one more sale, it's worth sending another email. It's worth you know, doing another social media post. You're just burning kernels. I mean, this is why most email lists are useless. I mean, I've, I've coached so many, you know, thousands of people by this point in 13 years. And I just noticed that a lot of people, they, they are not, or they're just not aware of these dynamics. They learn from most marketers are also not aware of these dynamics. And so they exhaust their email list too quickly they burned the pot. Whereas I used to burn the pot, I burned the pot before, but then because I've been here for, like I said, 13 years, I, I burned the pot for the first few years, I didn't know any better. <clears throat> and then I started over in 2013, 2014. And since then, I have been very careful not to burn the pot. So you'll notice when I launch something, are you on my, if you're on my email list, the, particularly my launch list, I have like two separate email lists. One is just for my launches. You'll notice in my launch list, if you subscribe to it, you're only going to get two emails for each thing that I launch. Two emails. That's it. Most marketers send two emails, you know, a day or a week, a, a week, they send four or five emails for something they're launching. I send two a month, usually only two emails to launch something a month. My other email newsletter is just content. And at the bottom of my content newsletters, I'll mention something I'm launching, but they have to scroll all the way to the bottom to see what I'm selling next. But 
I'll tell you, this is why my audience is so much more, um, a better relationship with me, much more responsive, because I have built a reputation of not burning the pot. And it's, and it's just because, and you know what, and here's the thing, like, I feel like a lot of you who are watching this are even more sense, like, I feel like I'm pretty sensitive as a marketer, right? And a lot of you are at least as sensitive, if not more sensitive than me, you're like emotionally tuned in to other people. But for some reason, I see a lot of you, like, when you start doing your marketing, you like lose that sensitivity, because you're just following someone else's formula. And so like popcorn, you're burning the pot too much. And so therefore, over time, your marketing doesn't get any easier. It just keeps on getting really, keeps on being really hard. So this, so if, by the way, if you do see a friend or a colleague or just someone you're subscribed to, you're subscribed to their email list and you see them burning the pot or you see them using fear of missing out kind of tactics or kind of controlling tactics, um, it's a really kind and thoughtful thing if you let them know. Because otherwise they won't know. They're, they're going to keep burning the pot, <laughs> right? And like I said, it's like the, the popcorn. The popcorn could like t tell you, hey, we're kind of burning down here. You better turn, turn off the fire. Unlike most marketers, they just keep the fire on and, until all the pot is burned and they got a couple more kernels. But then, then the marketing just keeps getting harder over the years. Whereas my marketing has gotten easier over the years because of a better relationship with more people. So if you have someone you're subscribed to that's burning the pot, that's kind of annoying you in their marketing, please let them know. You're doing them a favor. By the way, if I'm burning the pot ever, please let me know. Give me your opinion on it. Now, I won't, maybe I won't agree with your opinion on some, some things, but if I hear several people tell me that independently, then of course I will be very, uh, you know, be very, very open to it. So tell the person you subscribe to who's burning the pot, say, I really appreciate your content and your, and you know, the services you promote. Otherwise I still, I wouldn't still be sub subscribed, but there really is no need to use fear of missing out or other inauthentic marketing tactics, because if your offer is aligned with your audience and you explain it clearly, they're going to buy at their own best time. And they're going to appreciate your authenticity and your gentleness in your marketing. And you'll have a longer term relationship that leads to even more sales and easier marketing over time. In other words, you are asking them to motivate their audience based not on fear, but on love, on respect, on compassion on a genuine sense of service, graceful service. Because I, I, like I said, I, whenever I talk to those of you who I get to talk to, you are such a graceful, sensitive, compassionate, um, wholesome person. And yet I look at marketing that's being done by not by you necessarily, but by, by just a lot of people who are normally gracious, sensitive, compassionate people. And it's just like, I don't understand why that sensitivity hasn't translated into their marketing. Well, it's because they're follow they, they've, they've taken their own authority and set it aside and said, oh, dear marketing genius, dear marketing expert, you must know better than me. So you do the marketing your way while I serve my clients in my graceful, sensitive, compassionate way. No, because first of all, it's, that's, what, that's what inauthentic marketing means. You're not aligned between your normal, graceful, sensitive self versus how you show up in your marketing. And the reason I think is because we believe if we follow the marketing experts scarcity-based sort of burning the pot kind of advice, we're going to get enough clients and that will satisfy our business needs and our personal fulfillment needs, et cetera. Not realizing that 
you keep doing that and your marketing keeps getting being hard and very difficult over time and it never gets any easier because you always you've always you're always burning people and you always have to keep getting new people so you can burn them again and get new people burn them again whereas the way that i've been doing it and trying to teach it to you for all these years is it's a long-term strategy it's a long-term view and let me just say, George, I don't have that long. I don't have time. I have to get clients now. Well, get clients now, not by burning your audience, but by doing individual caring outreach. That's how you get clients now in the next three months. Because most people, when they do marketing, they don't reach out one-to-one. -one. They just send it out to their email list. They send it out and put it on social media too many times, right? But if you do individual caring outreach, with your normal grace, gracious, sensitive self, not making anyone buy, but just letting them know this is available and that you're thinking of them and that um, you'd love to really serve them, that, that's, that this is right for them. And you just do that with graciously, sensitively with enough people that you already know you, you already have enough. This is the, this is what I keep trying to talk about in terms of selling and getting enough clients. You already know enough people to get you a full client load. I'm almost certain of it. Can't guarantee that for all of you. But for most of you who are watching this, probably you, you already know enough people to have a full client load. You just aren't reaching out to them one-to-one -one in a thoughtful way. It may take you half an hour to write an email to someone thoughtfully. But what, are you, what else are you doing with your business all day, right? I mean, what else are you doing? I mean, you, you, you spend the half hour writing a thoughtful email to a friend or a colleague, seeing if they know people who would need or appreciate your offer, if they can give you feedback on, on the offer. So you do that for an hour a day, two people a day. So let's say you work five days, a week, that's 10 people individually outreached about your offer per week. That's more individual outreach than most solopreneurs do in a month. You would do that in a week. Most of you don't even do any individual outreach period, right? So this is, you get full client load in the beginning by doing individual outreach so that your mass marketing can be gentle, can be long-term with a long-term view because well, just like you know, making the popcorn again, when, once you turn on the fire, you got to wait for a while before it starts popping. And most of you maybe aren't, don't realize you have to wait for a while or aren't willing to wait. So you like turn it on way high and it burns the popcorn before it even really gets to, to popping. Like you can't, again, this is not the perfect analogy because I think you do have to put it on high heat <laughs> for a while or something anyway. But the idea again is you, you sustained low heat is much more of an audience builder than high heat until you burn the whole pot. And in the meantime, you do individual, graceful, sensitive outreach. Like I said, you just do two per day you spend one hour on your marketing outreach per day, sending two emails, emails to two people. So that's 10 people a week. And then you, you send the emails to 10 people a week and you probably know 150, 200 people that you could send to. So 10 people a week, that takes you 15 weeks. And then you could circle back around to those same 150 people. Or by that point, maybe they've introduced you to other people and you've gotten more than 150 people at this point. So out of 150 people you email, you'll probably fill your client load or at least get closer to it, um, you know, get close to it. So think of marketing as a long-term relationship building activity with a bunch of people at once, being careful not to burn the pot. And in your selling, in your client, you're getting clients, you individually email people two a day, two a day, two a day, two a day, until you feel your client load. So I hope this is helpful. Um, and of course, once you, once you feel your client load or email those people, you can circle back around if you want to email those same people every, every six months or so, let's say. It's not, it's not too often. 
Um, and then after six to 12 months, you're sustained low heat mass marketing of social media and you know email newsletters or whatever, starts to get you client inquiries just by itself without you having to do any more individual outreach. That's what happened to me. That I started in 2014 with this strategy that I'm talking to you about. And I had a full client load in the first year when I started over because I was doing individual outreach. And then my mass marketing outreach, which I had to figure out. I mean, I'm teaching all the stuff that I learned myself and experimented. It took from 2014, 2015, 20, middle of 2016. So it took me two and a half years of gentle mass marketing with content like this until I suddenly realized, oh, I, I no longer had to do individual outreach. All of them were coming to me but for my gentle marketing like this. So it took me two and a half years because I didn't know what I was doing. I was experimenting a lot. Now I can teach it to you and hopefully take you less than two and a half years. But in the beginning, you still just do your graceful individual outreach. So I hope this is helpful. Um, the key message is, well, really the golden rule. You know, you don't want to, do, don't do unto others what you don't like being done unto you. And, uh, and notice what you like being done unto you and do that also with others in a gentle, sustained, low heat way. So I hope this helps. And uh, thanks for joining me for these. Always open to your comments and questions below.